What is up everybody? So if you've watched Making a Murderer, you probably know that last week Kathleen Zellner has filed her latest motion on behalf of Stephen Avery to try and get him an evidentiary hearing, a new trial, and eventually released from prison. Since that time, Stephen Avery's, one of Stephen Avery's original trial attorneys, Jerry Buting, has made a couple comments on Twitter about Kathleen Zellner's newest motion and what's currently going on in the case. Of course, Jerry Buting and Dean Strang were Stephen Avery's original trial attorneys during the first season of Making a Murderer. They no longer represent Stephen Avery. I don't think Dean Strang has Twitter. If he does, I've never been able to find it. But Jerry Buting does, and he's quite active and still talks about the case a fair bit. So we're going to go over what he's had to say since Kathleen Zellner's newest motion came out last week. He starts out by saying it's another Brady violation, talking about what Kathleen Zellner put in the motion. Now, I have a eight part series up. Yeah, that's right. Eight parts. An eight part series up where I go over everything that Kathleen Zellner put in her motion. If you go to the channel that you're currently on and click on videos, you'll see all eight videos pop up there in a row if you're interested in checking it out. So he states, it's, an eight, it's another Brady violation. As usual in these cases, a stroke of luck defense ever found out. Meaning that the call that was recovered was never meant to be recovered. A lot of people were saying that Thomas Sawinski never actually called, never actually did the things that he did, but the call, not only did they find the call, they found the date and time that he did call. A new records clerk apparently made a mistake, a mistake in doing what should have been done a long time ago, and included Thomas Sawinski's call in a new open records request in May of 2022. The call was hidden from us, us being Dean Strang and Jerry Buting, and from Kathleen Zellner until now. So this call is huge. Like I said, there was people out there that saying that this guy never did this, he never made the call, but he did, and it was withheld all of this time. He goes on to state, uh, replying to a question that said, this is the worst county in the entire country. They don't really try to hide that they are trying to hide evidence, interviews and phone calls, reports, bones, and the list goes on and on. The audacity of this county, as if they are above the law, they swear to uphold. Jerry Buting replies with, sadly, this is not unique to Manitowoc. Though it is more corrupt than most, wrongful conviction attorneys across the country will tell you about Brady violations that are accidentally discovered years and decades later. Brady rules fail to prevent dishonest cops and district attorneys who hide evidence. He replies to this question by Rookie1082. This person has a ton of great information on making a murderer. The amount of work that this person does is crazy. It is so cool to see. Definitely give Rookie 1082 a follow if you're into this case. Uh, this is important. The Wisconsin DOJ did all they legally could to try and prevent Jerry Buting and Dean Strang from putting up a good defense with phone records, with proper records. It wasn't until 2019 that the Colburn call was timed and only because of 147 page log sheets. Needle in a haystack. Jerry Buting replies with, it's true they deliberately stripped the call times from the tracks provided. Spent hours trying to discern the sequence and times of calls based only on content and subjects discussed. For everybody out there that believes Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey are guilty, you're absolutely free to feel that way. You're able to think whatever you want about the case. But why was all of this evidence hidden from police? If he was guilty, why did they have to hide all of this evidence? Why did they have to suppress all this evidence? If he was guilty, shouldn't they have been able to prove that by doing their jobs correctly? Now, this is also replying to a tweet. The tweet said, what can be done to overturn rewrite Brady? If those types of loopholes can be exploited by crooked judges, what can be done to change it moving forward? He replies by stating, Scouties could start by saying there's a constitutional right to discovery. So far, they have refused. Second, 
abolish absolute immunity for prosecutors who violate any discovery rules, Brady or otherwise. Third, adopt civil discovery for criminal cases, including sworn depositions. He replies to the question, which prompts the question, what else are they hiding? People need to watch this closely. Remind the Wisconsin DOJ, whoever runs that Twitter account must, the tweets they get are unreal. Remind the Wisconsin DOJ and others in charge that, the, that this filing must be acted upon lawfully, not cast aside with bias and contempt like previous ones, like Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey were in the first place. Meaning that the other filings that Kathleen Zellner has put forward have been just dismissed rather quickly and without them actually, I mean, and if you read the response, without them actually even barely looking at it, it seems. Jerry Buting replied to that by saying, indeed, what else are they hiding? They've, uh, they've always had this call and clear time stamps for all officials and record clerks should give sworn deposition testimony about where and how their records are stored. Maybe someone has the personal integrity not to lie under oath. Another one from Rookie1082. This would be a good time to remind people the flyover video conveniently does not include footage of the gas station that Kevin Romlo was at and the location he claims he saw the car. This could be a huge coincidence, but, pr but suppression is the name of the game. So meaning they could have this, they could have the video of them flying over where the RAV4 was reportedly seen, and they've just either cut the video and destroyed it, or it's still out there and it's just being suppressed like everything else. Jerry Buting states that this is definitely not a coincidence. I saw in an interview with you and Dean Strang and saw where you said the state didn't have to prove motive, but did have to introduce a third party. I thought because you are jeopardizing someone's liberty, the court had to give the defendant more leeway than the state. Jerry Buting states, you might think so, but it's really stacked against defendants illusion of justice which is jerry buting's book i've read it <laughs> i've done a video series on it i highly recommend getting this book amazon itunes bookstores wherever you get your books pick that book up i got it on amazon i think it's a tremendous read so this is what jerry buting has to say about what's in kathleen zellner's newest motion um, a lot of good information there. If you haven't seen the motion, I will link it in the description below so you can go have a view for yourself. I think it's 149 pages long or something like that. And uh, that's what Jerry Buting thinks of it. Let me know. What do you think? What do you think of Jerry Buting's take on this? What's your take on this? Let me know. Leave some comments below. I hope you're having a good day and I'll see you again soon.